What is one of the most aggressive brain tumors known to man? It's rare, affecting three in every 100,000 people. Average age of diagnosis is 64 years old, and it affects men more commonly than women. Notably, it's taken the lives of Senator Ted Kennedy, Senator John McCain, and recently, singer Michael Bolton has revealed that he has the disease. It's a brain tumor called glioblastoma multiforme, or GBM, and it has no cure. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 62-year-old man who presented to his primary care doctor with just a few weeks of headaches and a few days of trouble finding his words. A few days ago, he even suffered a seizure with some twitching in his right hand. And at the time, he didn't know what it was. His primary care doctor astutely ordered an MRI of his brain and it showed a large rim-enhancing lesion in his left temporal lobe. One of the things that we can do in neuroscience is we can try to localize a lesion based on the clinical presentation. If you understand neuroanatomy and functional localization, you can correlate a patient's symptoms to a region in the brain. Some of the things that the patient mentioned in his history and on clinical presentation can help us localize this lesion to the left temporal lobe. He had trouble with his speech and the speech center in our brain is almost always in the left temporal lobe. There's a region in the brain called Wernicke's area, which is in the posterior part of the left superior temporal gyrus. Doctor, I have no idea what you're talking about. Basically speaking, it's a part of our brain that helps us understand language and words. So if there's damage to that part of the brain by a stroke or a tumor, it leads to fluent but nonsensical speech, AKA word salad. So they may say words, but it doesn't seem to make any sense. What are you doing today? We stayed with the water over here at the moment and talked with the people for them over there. They're diving for them at the moment. They'll save in the moment. He'll have water very soon. For so how do we diagnose glioblastoma? MRI findings are helpful, particularly in MRI of the brain with contrast. On these contrasted images, you'll usually see what we call a ring enhancing lesion. You see this white circle around this mass? That's the ring and it enhances with contrast. We administer contrast through an IV when someone gets an MRI and then that contrast glow goes into the bloodstream and will fill into areas where there's high blood flow, like this tumor. You'll usually have an area of central necrosis, which is the center spot that's black. And why it looks like that is because this tumor has grown so fast, the inside of it is necrotic or dead tissue. And then surrounding the lesion, you'll usually see some vasogenic edema, which is right here, and that's swelling in the normal part of the brain surrounding the tumor. But we can really make the diagnosis is by sampling the tissue or taking a piece of the tumor and sending it off to the lab so we can tell exactly what it is. And that involves, well, brain surgery. Depending on the area of the brain and how safe it is to remove the tumor, the patient may undergo a resection of the mass or a biopsy of the mass. When we take that tumor, we cut it up and look at it underneath the microscope. The pathology is consistent with pseudopalisading, necrosis, microvascular proliferation. So we'll usually take it a step further and look at the immunohistochemistry of the tumor itself. Immunohisto what? It actually plays a crucial role in how we give a prognosis to a patient with GBM and how we begin their treatments. We'll look at something called the IDH1 wild type, and that may tell us if this is a secondary glioblastoma or basically if the patient had a lower grade tumor that converted into a glioblastoma. The patient may not have ever known that they had this lower grade brain tumor until it turned bad. Patients with an IDH1 mutation actually have a more favorable prognosis. IDH wild type glioblastomas typically carry a poorer prognosis than those with IDH mutants. And that means its tumor initially started as a glioblastoma and not as a lower grade brain tumor. So it grows rapidly and has a poorer prognosis. And in fact, about 90% of GBMs are the wild type. There's other things that we also look at like the MGMT methylation, P19Q deletion. Those two things can tell us that the tumor may respond better to certain chemotherapeutic agents. What causes glioblastoma? The truth is, we don't really know. There's an accumulation of genetic mutations that happen in brain cells that lead them to form these type of cancerous cells in the brain. And we don't know what causes these mutations. And research is key in help us identifying some of these genes. We hope that continuing research will help us better detect, diagnose, and treat glioblastoma.
Signs of glioblastoma really depend on what part of the brain that the tumor begins in. So some patients could have very minimal symptoms with very large tumors, and other patients can have small tumors with a variety of different presenting symptoms. How do we treat it? I mentioned that surgery is key to help us making that diagnosis, whether it be through biopsy or resection of the mass. And how we determine if the patient has resection or just a biopsy really depends on what region of the brain and how much we can safely resect. Typically, to give the patient the best prognosis, we want to offer maximum resection that is safe. There is no known method to remove all of the glioblastoma cells from the brain. So in other words, we can remove all of the visible tumor that we see when we're in the operating room, but inevitably we cannot remove every single cancer cell. Microscopic tumor cells will remain and will recur. So the treatment is aimed at removing as much as we can and then treating the remaining cells with chemotherapy and radiation. This will minimize the amount of tumors that is there and slow the growth of those remaining tumor cells. And remember, it can't eliminate it all. Radiation therapy is usually over a period of six weeks after the patient is recovered from surgery. Usually a drug called temozolomide is used for chemotherapy. There are many other components of the treatment, including seizure prophylactic medications, steroids to help reduce the swelling, in addition to therapy, including physical therapy and occupational therapy for the patient to help live with the manifestations of this disease. And of course, all the social support and palliative care management. Now that's the medical side of this diagnosis, but let's talk a little bit about the human side. Not only does GBM steal time from people, it can steal their memory, speech, personality, and a magnitude of other things. The social cost of this disease is massive. Loss of independence, family members become caregivers. It's not just a medical battle, it is an emotional, financial and spiritual battle. So why does this matter? Because GBM does not give warning signs. By the time we detect it, the disease itself is already miles ahead. Not only do I treat people with this diagnosis, I have had several friends and colleagues who have passed from this disease. Making that diagnosis and telling a patient that this is what they have is gut-wrenching. We need more awareness, more funding, more research because every year glioblastoma takes people that we're not ready to lose. Our patient has started his treatment. He had a near gross total resection of his mass that gave him the diagnosis of glioblastoma and he's undergone his radiation treatments and his own temozolomide. He's brave, he's hopeful, but he's also realistic. Average survival after the diagnosis is 12 to 18 months with the five year survival of under 7%. It is Gray May, it is Brain Tumor Awareness Month. So make sure to share this if you have had a loved one that's affected by brain cancer. Support glioblastoma research and always take your brain seriously because you just never know. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case. Check the link in my bio so you can help us support brain tumor research